Bokatov covering. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live, and we do have breaking news coming out of Syria. Uh, of course, the offensive has really begun far more heavier by the Syrian and Russian militaries uh, to take back Idlib. But on the heels of this happening, uh, Vanessa Bealey shared this article on Twitter. Of course, she wrote in her tweet, it is alleged that 200 American and British soldiers are trapped in Idlib. Uh, it, it says here in the article that she shared with me, which is from freenation.net, that tr uh, 200 British and U.S. troops are trapped in Idlib. It speaks about in this article how that the U.S. has been working with Turkey and with Russia to try to get the soldiers out of this area. They are advisors to the jihadists that are fighting in this region. Once again, this is being kept from mainstream media in the United States because, after all, it shows the complicity of our work behind the scenes with the terrorist organizations, Al-Qaeda, Al-Nusra, uh, Al-Sham, whichever ones you want to name, we are behind them and working with them to overthrow the president of Syria, Bashar al-Assad. Very troubling indeed to, to hear about this. Well, the odd thing is, is that Turkey has rejected the uh, rescue of these soldiers and to take them to the Inserlik Air Base there inside of Turkey, which, by the way, let's just jump over here, look at the map here. You got to understand this is a very troubled issue because, after all, when you're in Idlib, Latvia, we have the Russian air base, which is right here. Russia controls this area, Turkey controls this area, U.S. forces are in Idlib. There's no way out. You got to either go through Syrian troops, Turkish, or Russian. All right. Now, the Turkish troops, which they could easily cross the border into Turkey and get safe passage to the Insulaic Air Base, but they have declined the U.S. help and the U.K.'s help to be able to go to the Insulaic Air Base there inside of Turkey. A U.S. NATO allied air base and a NATO allied country rejecting their help. Now, the Russians would help. You know, it's funny, Turkey's your NATO ally and they turn you down. The Russians offer to help evacuate the U.S. and British uh, forces out of this area, but unfortunately the U.K. with their little uh, hypochondriac acting over the Scripple case, which the evidence that they have provided is unfounded still, um, refuses to work with the Russians. I guess they're afraid that something might happen to their soldiers seeing as they keep putting all the propaganda out there to the world. So now they're fearful to do anything as far as have Russians help them because one, it would be very embarrassing uh, before the United Kingdom for their soldiers to be in the custody of Russian soldiers and to see that Russians actually would help rather than hinder. What a shame it is. That's when you know that the UK is involved in propaganda, clearly and very obviously. Uh, also, we're dealing with other issues here. Of course, as we see here, as I said, we the, the US and uh, Russian forces are trapped in Idlib. They have been military advisors and trainers for the Al-Qaeda, Al-Nusra, and all the terrorist organizations there uh, to prepare for this battle that was upcoming. Now. If you go back in time, and we can go back to uh, actually, wrong article, Veterans Today on December 17th of 2016, this is an, a, not an unusual situation that happens in Syria. Updated, Syrian special forces captured 14 U.S. coalition officers captured in Aleppo. We can go back not too long ago, earlier this year, down near Damascus, uh, where still never was in mainstream media, about, I think it was a little over 200 British, uh, mostly British, some Americans that were trapped down there uh, as they worked with the different Al-Qaeda members to stage false flag chemical attacks in the White Helmets. They, got tra they actually didn't just get trapped, they got captured by the Syrian forces. I don't think that was ever really resolved until Helsinki when President Trump met with President Putin privately. But I do believe that that was worked out. 
kind of odd how those things kind of become hush hush and never spoken about publicly but now we have another major issue and i kind of find it interesting that the business insider is not reporting this exactly accurately they say russia reportedly warns the u.s that it's that it's prepared to attack a key base where dozens of u.s troops are stationed now that's actually a false statement what it is, the Syrian government with the Russians have said they're going to start taking out the ISIS militants that are stationed around the Al-Tanf base in southern Syria. And they're warning the U.S. that they're going to do so. Well, the United States has moved in more troops into the Al-Tanf base, a hundred more from what some reports are coming out of Syria right now. Uh, and at the same time, but we continue, continue to hear false media coming out out of the west saying that russia said that they're going to attack the base now some people are saying well that's kind of stupid for russia to do that haven't they haven't hasn't russia learned anything from the wagner group uh, that happened earlier this year in syria and speaking of that we were actually the ones that broke that news to the world if you'll notice right here on your screen it was february the 8th one day after that attack of 2018, U.S. strike in Syria kills 100 Syrian military and Russian contractors. I know there's some, some people out there that even watch this broadcast, not very favorable of us, uh, that were following another Israeli alternative media source there that said that was fake news, that I was wrong on that and they had the real news. Didn't take long though, I think it took about 48 hours before finally ABC came out and backed up our story and uh, spoke about the Wagner Group. And we called them Russian contractors. So we do have a little bit of intel on the ground ourselves when things are breaking inside of Syria. But this is not the only issue that we're dealing with. As we spoke about, you're dealing with now the uh, Syrian forces uh, talking about striking the ISIS militants that have sought safe haven and refuge around the al tanf base there near the southern part of Syria. To kind of give you a bird's eye view of this again, let's move to the southern part of the border here. And you have to go right there to that major highway. If you'll notice, this is the country of Jordan, their northeastern corner. This is Iraq, southwest Iraq. And this major highway that feeds into Syria which should be open for uh, not uh, the United States military, but it should be open for being able to do business with Iraq by the uh, Syrian government. But instead, we have a U.S. military base. Google Maps shows it plain as day, so we'll pull it up here on the Google's Maps for you. Uh, we have a U.S. military base right here in this region. Let me just see if this is the one or back up. Uh, up there, that's the borderline right there. And uh, we actually, the U.S. military is controlling that, and we've actually built an airport there. Imagine that. Right beside the highway, the United States military has built an airport. And what's interesting is that uh, as, as the Google updates their satellite footages every so often, that military base is growing with planes, Drones, mainly it's a drone base right there. And of course, uh, they've pretty much uh, blurred it out more so than what it used to be, but you could see everything a lot clearer. So this is the area down near here, near that southern border. This is where all those different ISIS militants are hiding out. And there's been reports over and over of unmarked planes coming in and rescuing different ISIS militants and their families and moving them to other locations undisclosed to the, pu to the public. Well, kind of interesting about this because my wife did a news update and it was uh, on this one here. She rarely does news, but you know, Yana does speak fluent Russian, so no, and she's not a Russian and no, she never liked Russia. I know some people get that mistaken. She grew up under communism and absolutely despised communism as a result. And of course, her grandfather was taken away by Stalin and never seen or heard of again when he had to go to Siberia and work up there in the concentration camps there. Uh, but anyway, let me play just a clip of this of what she reported back on February, excuse me, September 24th of 2016. 
and now it seems like a Russian media is bringing it out for entire uh, Russian region in uh, their uh, Pravda that are you and I want to play you this uh, video what she's talking about here is Yana was monitoring Russian news and she had discovered that the U.S. Uh, had actually struck Russian, excuse me, evidence had emerged that Russia struck a U.S. coalition forces. And this never went public. We reported it. There were several, excuse me, U.S. military forces that were killed there. And what we have seen over and over and over in Syria is that Russia would kill U.S. forces. The United States would kill Russian forces, and it was always tit for tat, retaliation after retaliation. And it really began more earnest when Aleppo, remember when Russia sent that bunker buster in the mountains outside of Aleppo, destroyed that secret base that the uh, intelligence community had operatives, including Turkey, uh, there were, uh, let's see, Qatar, Saudis, Israeli, one Israeli uh, Mossad operative, as well as one CIA operative, and they were directing all the fighting operations inside of Syria from a secret bunker in the mountains outside of Aleppo. Well, Russia, in retaliation to something that was done also near De Azor, when U.S. forces, their allied NATO forces, the coalition, had struck the Syrian army, killing I think it was, they claimed 69 Syrian soldiers were killed, but they had also killed about 14 Russian special ops that were in that area as well. And so in retaliation to that, Russia struck their secret base in Aleppo and killed all the uh, intelligence officers in that base. And then from that point on, it's always been tit for tat. And it's always, if you'll ever notice, like in the case of Aleppo, when there was so much uproar at the United Nations, at the Security Council meetings by the United States, demanding an end to the war. And Israeli News Live has always been there for you guys, letting you know what was really going on in the back of the room, what the world was not being told. And again, what was it? We had U.S. forces trapped inside of Aleppo needing to get out. In the case, as I shared with you, one insight there on veterans uh, today, talking about 14 U.S. coalition officers captured in Aleppo. These were things that took a little time to come out, but we were sharing with you even deeper secrets of things that were going on. And this is the same thing going on in Idlib now. This is why Nikki Haley is in an uproar and demanding. Forget now it's beyond the whole issue of a false chemical attack, which they desperately need. Now it's just if Russia and Syria even begin an attack on Idlib, something bad could end up happening as a result. It's no wonder why President Trump talks about this being the month, uh, what is it, stock up month, check your water supplies, battery supplies, things like that. I have a feeling something very sinister is about to happen. And unfortunately, just like you guys, we have no place to go. If we went to Europe, I'm sure it'll be a battleground there as well because this war will spread. And I have a feeling that East Europe won't fare very well in it as well. Neither will the United States, nor will Russia at the end of the day. But there's one thing about President Putin, unlike that of our president, he has prepared his people. He has told them. They have practiced mass evacuation drills going into bunkers. The entire nation has prepared. They know what's coming. But unlike Russia, the United States we have no bunkers except for the elite. We have no place to run and hide. And frankly, I wonder if they really even give a flip about us. After all, it's been the independent media that's been exposing what's going on in the world. Not just Israeli News Live, there are many others out there as well. They would like to silence us. And really the only way to silence America, let a war come to this country where they can enact martial law, and guess what? Then they'll be able to stop everything we've ever stood for in this country. Our freedoms, our rights will all go by the wayside. Martial law would have to be enacted because of the chaos and the mayhem that would ensue after a nuclear attack on this country. The supply chain will all break down. 
And even though I normally apply the biblical prophecy, you know, of Babylon has fallen to that of Rome, that, by the way, is only a type. Rome is a type of that prophecy. And of course, Scripture often has compound fulfillments. Like, out of Egypt I call my son, applied to the children of Israel leaving Egypt, as well as Yeshua coming out of Egypt after he had to flee there for the safety of his own life. And America is the daughter of Babylon, written in biblical prophecy. So everywhere you see the daughter of Babylon, that's the United States. And yes, we have made a lot of the world rich by our delicacies. But it would be nothing compared to what Rome will do as they have worked with China for the Silk Road and they will build a brand new economy that will grow very rapidly as it's already doing. That's why there's so much focus towards the East. And this is also why they have conquered the Middle East, destroying and killing the Muslim population, trying to basically annihilate them and genocide the Syrian and Iraq and any other population that's there in the Middle East. So that when they do begin to rebuild with their new world order, with their so-called fake millennial reign, their peace plan, they will think that they have brought about a utopia with a new world order, an AI society. And I'm sure those fallen angels, those demonic beings, because you have to remember, not all of them were in prison. What was it? Two-thirds were cast out of heaven, but there's only, what, about 200 that were in prison for the acts that they did here on the earth by cohabitating with the humans? Very troubling what's coming, friends. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. This was an emergency broadcast to share with you guys, and I would consider seriously stocking up. Listen, tonight on Israeli News Live, and I don't know if we're going to do it on Israeli News Live or Danoon Institute, but I need to share with you guys, I want to go into a Shabbat message for you about divine healing and to encourage you. We're getting many of you writing us about those that are, that are dying with cancer, to follow this ministry and we want to share some insights and my wife has a plan that we think might help everyone and of course there's others that believe in divine healing and that may be our only hope in some cases especially what's happening in the world today we'll talk about that in a special broadcast it'll either air on the noon institute or we'll run it live here on israeli news live not sure as of yet which way we'll go but pray for us Pray for your brothers and sisters. Tell somebody today about Yeshua, about Jesus. We're in a very late hour, friends. I'm Stephen Benoom with Israeli News Live. Bokatov.